Hello, my friends. My name is Joe, and today I'm going to be reviewing Dreamcatcher by Stephen King. It's no surprise if you've been watching any of my recent videos that I am still on my Stephen King train. So let's keep this train rolling and talk about Dreamcatcher, okay? So this was my first experience with Stephen King's Aliens. I know that his alien work is a little bit polarizing for some people, um, but this was my first experience with it and it started off great, okay? It was creepy, it was shocking, it was twisty, it was turny, we were having a good time. I was genuinely disturbed at some parts and it was just so great for the first 400 pages. We have a great group of friends in this book, okay? I probably could have just followed Jonesy, Henry, Pete, Beaver, and Duddits for the entirety of this 700 page behemoth and I would have not had any complaints. They were just that engaging. We have some great flashbacks to their childhood where they save Duddits from a pretty serious bullying situation and, you know, just become the best of buds. And their friendship with Duddits just brings something super magical into these boys lives and from the point that they rescue Duddits from this bullying situation on through their lives they are tied together through the sheer magic that is Duddits. I love Duddits if you can't tell. But I do have to say throughout the course of the book the R word is used in reference to Duddits because Duddits has Down syndrome so if you are in any way triggered by that sort of language just be aware that it is in there you know, going in. But of course, through adulthood, they leave both the magic of their childhood as well as the magic of Duddits behind. Jonesy, Pete, Henry, and Beaver still get together at least once a year to go on a hunting trip at Beaver's late father's cabin up in Maine. And that my friends, is where the aliens come in. So as my first experience with Stephen King's Aliens and not being a avid reader of alien literature, I really like these guys. I really liked the aliens that Stephen King created in this book. They were scary in more ways than one. You know, we have the, the classic butt probing human incubator situation, but we also have this like sporous moss that, you know, seeps into anywhere where there's blood. So like, you know, beware of a paper cut because this moss will grow in your innards, like it will just infiltrate your body and grow and it's gross. It's absolutely horrifying and you, you, you just can't control it, okay? If you touch the moss, you're gonna have a problem. And we also have some mind control things going on as well. So very, very interesting, very interesting alien situations that are happening. Some of the scenes in here literally made my skin crawl, okay? There's this one scene and this is not a spoiler in any way, I don't think personally, but there's this one scene in this book where one of the aliens literally makes this guy stick two fingers up his nose and dig and Stephen King makes a point to let us know that this man is not a nail biter. So when I say he sticks his fingers up his nose and he digs, he digs, my friends, he digs, and my nose hurts just thinking about that scene. And I had to pause. <laughs> I had to take a pause when I read that because I was like, Woo! Okay, we're gonna dig. So throughout the first half of this book, we are introduced to our great band of dudes and we're learning more about these aliens who are genuinely terrifying and, you know, everything is great. Everything is fantastic and then the plot starts to take a little bit of a nosedive when we are introduced to this military operation that is happening. The US military has obviously sent a group up to Maine to hush-hush the alien situation. We've got to eliminate the threat and the infected and hush hush the alien situation. And with that comes this guy named Kurtz, okay? So I was initially really intrigued by this part of the book because Kurtz, the name of Kurtz, who is the leader of this military operation, is a really obvious reference to the novel Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, which is uh, one of my least favorite books of all time, but it's very interesting connection, right? Very interesting connection. So I was really looking forward to Kurtz's whole, like the horror, the horror, which is a, a line from Kurtz and Heart of Darkness. I was really looking forward to that moment. I was really looking forward to those kind of ties from Heart of Darkness. But in the end, Kurtz and his crew just fell a little bit flat for me, okay? They fell a little bit flat. The more that they started interacting in the story, the more time that we got with Kurtz and this military operation, I just, I feel like I am just not interested in modern day military like shenanigans in my stories. I like medieval like military. I like the fighting and the battles and the swords and the shields and stuff like that. I just don't know if modern military things are for me. I don't know. We got to a certain point with the military storyline that I just felt like it was getting a little bit redundant. And I found Kurtz himself to be a super lackluster villain, especially 
in comparison to literal space aliens that have, you know, landed and are taking over the place and this moss and this sickness. I just felt like Kurtz as a villain was just kind of like, we didn't need him. We didn't need him in the story. They just drew the attention away from what Jonesy and the crew were dealing with, which that portion of the story I just found so much more intriguing. This leads me into my second kind of con uh, of the story is that it was just a little bit too long. The first half of the book was just fantastic. We were introduced to our characters. We were learning about their past, their struggles, their relationships with one another, you know, their childhood. We've introduced the aliens who are super intriguing and also the military portion had been introduced, but we hadn't yet reached redundancy with that portion of the book. Everything was moving, the plot was going, and I felt like there was kind of like a rush against the clock. Like I, I mean, this book follows these characters within like a two or three day time time period, and it's 700 pages long. So we're following every fart and finoodle that these characters are going through, and I felt this rush to the end. I felt anxiety. I felt like we were racing against the clock, you know? But then it hit a certain point around like the 420, 450 page mark where we kind of just slowed way down. And that slowed way down lasted for about 150 pages and then we picked right back up with that rush like 50 pages from the end. And within that 150 pages, things were happening, the plot was moving, the characters were doing things. I just felt like that rush against the clock, that race, that anxiety, that push was just missing. The action had died down, the threat of the aliens wasn't as imminent, we were focusing more on the military and their kind of inner conflicts that were going on and I just wasn't, I just wasn't as interested for that like 150 page, that 150 pages it was just like can we get back to the aliens? There were still things that I found interesting during this portion, you know, concerning a certain character. I found myself dreading the moment when the perspective would shift away from that character and into this like military compound, you know? So we had this little bit of a slog in the middle and then for the last 50 pages, we picked back up this 100 mile an hour sprint to the end. So I gave this one a three, but it's more of like in the three, 3.5 range. The group of guys were fantastic. The aliens were actually scary and the plot kept me engaged for the majority of the time. But Kurtz and the gang became such a big part of the story around the halfway point and I just didn't find them as interesting as some of the other plot lines that we had been exploring previously. But I could definitely see if you are someone who, you know, is interested in sort of military aspects, their kind of inner conflicts, how the United States military would respond to a kind of alien force coming down, we come in peace situation. If you're into that, I could definitely see how Kurtz and the gang's, you know, chapters and, and uh, time that they're given in this book would be something that you're really interested in. It just, I was more interested in other parts of the story and they became such a big part of the story that I was just like, I'm kind of bored. I'm kind of bored. Let me know down below if you've read this book. Let me know your thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to join the Not So Average Joe Army. We're still on our Stephen King kick. Like I said, I just started Cujo last night, so it's continuing. It is continuing. But I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you next time.